these are the terms that make sense for me right now. That's it. You know. Right. We're live. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Um. Welcome everybody to another episode of Love Language the Roundtable. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to say um, thanks to everybody who has joined recently. Not joined. Sound like a, like we a gang or something. But everybody who has liked the page in recent weeks and followed it and shared the videos. We appreciate all of you and we hope to um, continue to have an engaging conversation as often as possible. If you have topics that you would like for us to discuss uh, that we haven't discussed uh, or if there's any um, conversations that we've had that you think we should revisit, um, we're open to all of that. We'll be coming up on our year um, I think March 9th, I think is the date, but in 2020, most high will come up on a year. And um, we talk about a lot of stuff, but of course, two hours from blog talk days now is never enough. So if there's any topics that you think we should revisit or any uh, other perspectives, you know, we welcome, we welcome any and all um, contributions. So welcome to the page. So again, love language the round table. And if you're on YouTube and you're watching this uh, after the fact, oh yeah, if you're on YouTube, we encourage you to to like the video as, as they're playing and um, subscribe so you don't miss any of the additional updates. And then, um, what was I gonna say, like it, like the page. And then, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I guess it's not important, whatever, okay. All right, so today's topic is, um, oh, I do know, I know what I was gonna say. If you watch this after the fact on YouTube and you ever wanna come on the show, we are on Facebook. That's the only social media platform that we occupy. Primarily because who's on uh, Instagram? Not me. So we're on Facebook and uh, so if you're not on Facebook <laughs> or if you're on some of those other social, maybe you're younger and you do like IG and oh, I'm on IG, like what is that? But if you wanna join the, the conversation, we are on Facebook, that's where we are. And uh, we encourage you to uh, you know join that way or I think there's an email somewhere, I don't know, or comment in the, Post that you want to be on. I'm just trying to think of ways for people to get engaged. So forgive me for the the uh, rant, but I don't want to forget to say that. All right. So today's topic is in love and in laws, and um, the details say uh, when considering marriage, much of the attention is placed on the compatibility of the husband and wife. Yet it is no secret that in laws can hold a great influence over the health of a marital relationship. What role do in-laws play in the marriage? Should a husband or wife consider the viewpoints of their parents when it comes to their marriage? Why or why not? How do you properly address an interfering in-law? And what strategies are helpful in preserving the sanity of the entire family? So those are some of the initial, uh, okay, some of the initial questions. And um, uh, uh, we're gonna try to monitor the online discussion because again we're live on Facebook we're trying to monitor those comments and um so we, we, if we want to go ahead and, and start with some initial thoughts so the order will be uh Shema, Shamika, Zebulon, and then I'll go last. So opening comments. All right can you uh read what it is again? I'll just open the comments <laughs> in love and in laws right Oh, okay, yes. well, I'll just give a little brief one. I won't even take the seven minutes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Chief Zebulon, not the seven minutes, but in love and in-laws. Um, I think that, or well, I believe according to literature, uh, that the safest way to succeed is to uh, go by what better sheet or Genesis speak of, you know what I'm saying? The, the one, uh, you leave and you cleave unto each other. That needs to be the first line of defense. You know, it's crazy. I got to say line of defense uh, when dealing with family and or friends. Uh, the best defensive move to succeed collectively as a union, man and woman, husband and wife, is to... Uh, Focus on you yourselves first before you bring anyone in the mix. And if you do make sure that the this individual, these individuals are um, for you to, to uh, succeed, um, 
understand the importance it is to uh, not take anything that can uh, taint um, you too, you know, because um, it is a lot of people that's not married, you know, that people will take advice from, and then you got to look at their lifestyles. Another side of the uh, in love in laws is, uh, well, I'm gonna stop right there because I know you're about to come with the questions. So if I start going, I'm probably gonna hit a lot of these, a lot of the questions. So I'm gonna wait. So I'm just gonna say to start it off, uh, the main thing that I would say, first advice, first suggestion is to get you to in order before even bringing in um, the in-laws, you know, the courting process, basically. We always go back to courting, and that's it. Shamika. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually don't have an opening. I'm just okay. Cool. Gonna wait for the question. Okay, cool. All right. Sorry, y'all. Is it on me? And I'm sorry. I had to go handle something back here with the uh. No, with that's the cool. You, you want me to jump in while you do? Okay, and I had I had to kind of get yeah yeah I'll go I, I'll come in after you. Just okay, like okay. Kinda, yeah. you know. No, I got you. I understand. I got you. Um. So oh yeah, so the topic so yeah so in love and in laws right so uh I I I agree with you. I think that's in, that's a good that's always a good um idea is to be four to five because it is two in a marriage like theoretically so um but I think the conversation. Uh, you know, because there's a balance with everything. And I think it depends on your initial, um, it depends on your initial, uh, you know, understanding because not everybody, well, I guess, I guess just overall, I, I try to speak or be mindful of people who may not necessarily be, read the scriptures and look at that as, you know, like this is how we live life. But even in the black community, we have, um, traditionally give a lot of honor to our elders, rightfully so. And I think that that plays a part whether you say you profess in God, the God of the Bible or not. So, um, which is why the, the conversations are so important because a lot of times, not even, the, not with friends, because of course friends, you know, if you, something happens and you go out and talk to your girlfriend, something happens, you go out and talk to your boy. I mean, we, you know, that's something we do. We talk specifically today about in-laws. So there is a, um, there's a difference. So whereas you may or may not take advice from your home homie, you know, you probably will more or less take it from your either your parents or um or from the you know the opposite person's parents, just out of a um just you know being being coach being trained to be respectful of our elders. So it'll be interesting because there's always, like I said in the beginning, there's always a balance to the information that we take in. All information is not good information. And all information is not applicable to our lives at a particular moment. So it'll be good to, you know, dive through and, and find out when is it appropriate and when is it not. And I think that's what the questions will address. So that's all I have to say on that as far as opening. Okay, it's um, I I I think that it's, it's especially when you're coming from the African American um marriage paradigm you know which is uniquely different than what, what we read about in in our um in our scripts so with that you know with that said speaking from that angle um i think that the elder generation the grandparents or the great grandparents i think their role in relationships is sorely missed um when you look at when you look at the condition of um african american marriages today it's obvious that they need leadership. It's obvious. We're, this generation is jacked up. And, and, and the reason I think, and for that, I think the reason is because there's been a disconnect. When you look at uh, two generations ago, when, you know, you know, with grandmothers and grandfathers would have played a central role in the family, they're the ones who actually kept the order. Because listen, if you're 20, if you're 21, 22, 23 years old, and you, you know, you're just starting out as a married couple and you know, about to have children, you don't know anything. You haven't been around long enough to determine 
what's right for you or what's wrong. You you don't know. You, you know what I'm saying? You're wet clay. You're wet clay, and the the, the generation previously uh, previous to you, they are the molders. They are the sculptors. You don't know anything. I you know at least from my you know my perspective, I look at how I was back then and say, wow, I really didn't know much of anything. I thought I knew some things. I thought I understood women. I thought I understood relationships. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, because that information hadn't been given to me or whatever. But when I got around people who basically who have walked, who walked this planet for a while and who's been married for 30, 40, 50 years and successfully married, not, not just, you know, Hey, we're together, but you know, but just successful marriages for decades and decades. That's when you begin to realize how, um, how sorely missed that older generation's wisdom is essential for your success going forward. So I think that, I think for both ang angles, I think that, um, that while like, like what Shema said, that I think there has to be a point where, you know, uh, first line of defense, it has to be the man and his woman. It, it has to be, that has to be first and foremost. But right after that, there has to be an acknowledgement um, of the uh, um, the older generation, because again, they're the ones who's giving birth to you. And being that this is just the introduction, um, I'm just going to save so, some of the things that I was going to mention. I'll save it for the actual uh, questions going forward. But um, so yeah, I, I think it's I think uh, like like it's been said earlier uh, with everybody. I think it's just an issue of balance. There has to be a balance with anything that we deal with, but especially especially when you're talking about who you're receiving your uh your wisdom from or who you're receiving your information from uh to either strengthen or decimate your relationship yep so all good points so far um so the first question is not put it in the chat as well but um the first question is what role do in-laws play in the marriage i think we've, we've uh, sort of given a few um thoughts about it but to be more clear, what role do in-laws play in the marriage? So what roles do in-laws play in the marriage? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I say it depends on the marriage and it depends on the in-laws. Reason I say that is because now we're in a time where is some of us that's in what we call the truth? Is some of us that's first generation? Is some of us that's three, four, five generation Israelites? And those three, four, five generation Israelites make sure you get married to other Israelites. So the role of their parent can be different because those, uh, um, those in-laws have an understanding of your journey and your walk. So their message, their wisdom, their advice, their suggestions will be different. If you end up with someone that is not an Israelite or is an Israelite, but their first generation too, it's gonna to be a little tougher with the in-laws. You have in-laws that you can show them your type of journey, your walk, and they'll still ask the same question seven, eight years later and they won't understand. It's some that will. You know, like my mom knows my walk, she's not in it, but she don't ask the same questions. But my grandmother and them do, will. You know, so to answer, to the, it's not a black and white um, question nor answer. I guess it depends on, like I said, the in-laws themselves, if they're a part of your journey. Uh, if they're not a part of your journey, I guess what I would say is, um, I mean, they're still the parents of the person you're with. So they're gonna be, they gotta be, and they will be in the lives, in you all's lives. Um, but you have to establish that res respect from them, I would say. Um, and it's gonna all boil down to one thing, you and the person you're with. Y'all gotta establish each other first, because if you don't, then the in-laws that are definitely not in the truth will probably will get more influence or say so on your husband or wife than you will. So you gotta establish each other. That's my answer to the question. 
That's right. Bring it out. Okay, so that was 100% true. Um, yeah, it depends on the in-law because for uh, my in-law, it wasn't like great at the beginning, but I think it's what you build with them, how they see you as a parent, as a person, and the relationship y'all build. Um, so for me, um, I think, at least with my in-law, I think to be a grandma is their role, and or in grandfather, and um, to be a listening ear. Like, you can give me advice, but um, don't be offended if I don't take it. Like, don't act like your word is golden, and if I don't take it, I'm disrespectful, and I'm whatever. So you can give me advice, and I can receive it, but I can also take in the meat and spit out the bones. So I feel like being the listening ear versus always talking and expecting the person to um, say which, I mean, do whatever your advice is just because you're an elder and you're the mother of um, my husband and because you are older than us and you are my kid's grandma if you tell me they gotta have Tylenol and not elderberry then I gotta give them talent you know what I'm saying so I just feel like be a listening ear sometimes advice is cool but just be a grandparent and, and, indeed and, and and I think that um that like like I said in, in my previous um in my previous uh segment that uh that we have to I guess we gotta be mindful of which paradigm we're coming from. So obviously if we're coming from a African American, like if, if African American culture is the center of what we do, as opposed to like what Shema said, like if you're two, three, four generations deep in the culture, then of course expectations are gonna be different. And you know, whatever. And our view of their wisdom or their insight is going to be different but if you're coming from an african-american standpoint um yeah i can see how she, I, like what shamika said i can see how yeah uh i could hear i hear what you're saying and i'll and you know and i'll respectfully take that in consideration but like she said don't be upset if i say eh, i'm not gonna do that because whatever you know for whatever the reasons are and i think that um that comes of course with uh um, that mutual communication where they understand that their um that their information or that their knowledge is respected, but there's a possibility that hey, I might maybe I might have a better vantage point to the situation, so I'm going to go with that. But I think as long as there's a respect, as long as there's a mutual understanding that okay, and you know on 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 the uh, on the part of the grandparents too, they have to understand that there's also a possibility that they may not have the ultimate last word. You know, that what they're offering is exactly what it is. It's advice. You know, and advice can be taken or it can be left at the door. Um, you know, but again, but from a from a um a grounded um Hebraic perspective, I was always reminded of um uh in the book of Genesis, uh when we are uh, in uh chapter 30 and 31, where you see a particular scenario play out where Jacob is pretty much done with his his father-in-law he's like hey give me my wife give me my children he's like get up out of here I served you long enough I'm out of here then the very next chapter Laban is like uh dude you're, those are my daughters and my children and my cattle this is all mine so it's like wait a minute he say Jacob is saying that this is all his Laban is like, uh, no, dude, this is all mine. Your children and grandchildren, they're mine. And so I think that that's the other side of it as well. When we say grandparents, what are we saying? What is a grandfather? It is a high father. You have a father and you have a grandfather because hierarchy goes in ascending order. So when we talk about our father, Abraham. Abraham's not our father, but we acknowledge what? He's the grand father of us all. When we go to the scriptures and we say, oh, 
look what does precept say oh that's what that says oh I'm, and I go with that, and we go with whatever the scripture says on this, on an issue. What are we ultimately doing? We're saying that the older generation, they got it. I'm following that. When we go to Proverbs, which is not the word of the Most High, it's the words of Solomon, inspired by the Most High. When we go to Proverbs and we see what Proverbs says on something, what do we do? We read it. We say Hallelujah. Close the book, and we apply it. Why? Because we know that that particular generation of our fathers and mothers, that they were on point, that anything that came out of their mouths was inspired by the Most High, inspired by the Ruach or the Spirit of the Most High. So we did not have to bust our heads about that. But again, going back to what Shamika said, when, this, when that's not the case, <laughs> when, when, like what Shema said, when you're dealing with, let's say, you know, people who are not in the truth or they're not whatever, they're going to give you advice that might be worldly in its orientation. And you may have to be in a position where you may tell them, listen, I respect you, but I cannot accept that advice. So it, 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 it really depends on, the, um, on the, uh, the family background, the, you know, the cultural background, you know, how grounded are they in morality, you know, whatever, like, like with my mother's side of the family, I could not, I probably maybe, 99% of the time, I cannot accept anything that they tell me. Because they're just so, they're so in the world that anything that they tell me is probably going to be anti-Torah anyway. So I have to back up off of it, you know, because of that. But if somebody for, who's already in the community and they offer me advice on so whatever like that, I'm going to be more quick to hear because I'm like, well, I know how they move. And I think Shema brought that out perfectly. I know how they move. I know the integrity of that family, of that father and that grandfather. I know what they're about. So I'm going to definitely listen to them. Even if maybe if I'm, I might go elsewhere with my decision, but I'm definitely going to hearken to what they're saying because I know that their walk on this earth gives them the right to give me that information. So, um, so I agree. It, it, it really, it really depends on the family that you're dealing with. Um, whether it's a, a Hebraic family or whether it's a African American family, it's it's a it's a completely different um paradigm depending on um how you're moving on it. So yeah, and I wanted to just read some from the live stream. Uh, Noya, hey everybody that's watching online, hey. So Noya said, in-laws, you get to decide how you how you interact with them and what impact they will have on your relationship. And I think that's definitely the case. Um so the, qu the question again is what role do in-laws play in a marriage and you know just to know your point i think you do get a chance to decide one thing i do want to say um about the this question and the top of the topic overall you know we are we're not um we're not the older we get or the the more the, the more time prevails the less we do have respect for our, our elders so while it is culturally accepted still even though this kind of it's kind of disappearing but we still i'm gonna say people my age group now people that's younger they look they a lot more buck wow you know it was a it was a progression but um people who are 40 and older or maybe even 30 or older have some idea of i'm not gonna talk crazy to somebody that's older i think i think i can say that right so um as we look at people who are younger or who may not have that same agreement um then the conversations gets gets even even more muddy to where you can't even uh, receive information from somebody who is who is older. So, in a situation where your um, in law is saying something that's that's you know that's positive, you probably wouldn't even be able to um, to receive it. So, I, so I'm saying all that to say that the role that they play ultimately will depend on the the couple. You know, if they together have an agreement that we're not going to disrespect elders then that's what's up but if they both agree or if one of them is not really quite clear it's going to always cause a chasm in the relationship so i think that has to be uh like we always talk about court that has to be established early on does my potential husband does he disrespect his elders because that's the problem and that was my relationship being married my husband was disrespectful to his mother and i had never met a man i had never met a black man that ever talked crazy so the first time he ever did it i was like talking crazy to your mama what the hell so um but the flip side is that i i ended up i inherited 
or was given a wonderful mother-in-law. So my mother-in-law to this day is the nicest woman. We, we haven't always agreed, especially when it comes to um, keeping the laws and stuff like that. But what she has been is, uh, you know, she kind of fulfilled what my, what my mother didn't. So my, my auntie and my mother, well, my auntie and my grandma fulfilled different portions of what it looks like to be a mother and a woman, excuse me for me. So what I learned from my auntie is different from what I learned from my, my grandma, but my, my mother-in-law, but together they both give me a beautiful, you know, picture of what it is to be a, a black woman. So anyway, but what she taught me um, was a lot of practical things. Uh, what, you know, so, so in that respect, yeah, I will listen to my mother-in-law because we have a great relationship. Even when we don't agree, we have a great relationship. She's taught me things that I've implemented that have worked. So, and then when we got, when I got married, I never, it, it, she was so good at being even. So even when, when there was beefing between me and my husband or he was doing something, or I was doing something, she always was like, I'm, a, I'm not going to take sides. And that was her only son. So I'm saying all this to say that it's going to be, you know, primarily, of course, the initial, the, 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 the marriage has to be, there has to be agreement on how we're going to deal with not only outsiders, but we're elders. And then uh when there are division is it when there is a division in a household to where you know maybe uh you know maybe there's an issue about finances and perhaps uh and, and we just use the bible for example right so jethro is a perfect example of good advice from a father-in-law and from a, a nation that was not israel but the, the advice that he gave moses was so brilliant that we still do that to this day we don't it's not one person over everybody there's a chain of command there's order there's authority um so we have to i guess uh as a couple you know if you're married as a couple really be able to be open to to receive that information from the older people the parents and instead of just being like oh forget your mom or forget your dad you don't know what they're talking about be able to talk about that amongst yourselves um and be open to it because you never know when the information would be good or helpful. So, especially again, as I think, you know, Zeppelin and I said, a lot of us, we don't know what we're doing when you get married, especially if you get married real. I was 25, 26, I think when I first when I got married. So, what did I know? I didn't know a damn thing. So, be open to all of that and um and not taking everything personal. When somebody tells you something, not taking everything that's like it's attacking your character, because a lot of it is it's nothing to do with you. It's, it's, just like we, this is my last thing, just like with you as a, as a parent, you know, we tell our children things. We're not telling it to them because we are a weird overseer and we want to oppress them. We're telling them stuff because we've not already seen the end of that behavior and it's not good. So uh, that's what I'm going to say about that. So the next, um, uh, yeah, and, and just real quick, Noya said we have to respect, we have respect for the wisdom of our elders, but when they are speaking foolishness, <laughs> she said hard pass. Yep, I agree. Um, so the next question is uh, kind of redundant. It says, should a husband or wife consider the viewpoints of their parents when it comes to their marriage? Why or why not? And I think maybe we frame this question in, like, if it was your personal, like, if it was your parent. So as a husband, you know, would you consider them? Because they're close to you and then your parents. So would their advice, as opposed to your partner's advice, would their advice, um, be considerable. Is that a word? Would you think about it? Would you consider it? Okay. It's, it's, it's English. You can, you can look it up <laughs> as you go along. It's considerable. Thank you. I'm gonna put the question too in the uh, in the in the little chat box. But now we're talking about our own parents. So okay. Man, I ain't listen. No, I'm playing. Love my mother. Uh, my my aim or my ima uh to life. Um and my ab or ab, ab. Um will I change due to it being them? No. I will respect what they have to say. I think one of you all said it. Uh, it has to be along the lines of, of my culture, uh, not the culture here. Now, I'm not going to be silly and say that uh, it's not great advice, suggestions, things of that nature from people that's not a part of our culture, because that would be uh, falsehood, you know. But the thing to do is to discern the matter, because we know that 
uh, Moshe took some great advice from his uh, father-in-law that ultimately set the, 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 the way for and the structure for our um, Bedin. But of the same culture, though. Uh, yeah, it was the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was. But, 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 uh, but, point, but point taken nonetheless. Yeah, no, I, I needed you to come in and bring that out, uh, definitely. Um, but it, it, was, it was some differences within it, but it still was the same culture, like you said. So more so what I'm saying is um, I'm, I'm really following, you know, the culture of the of Torah, you know, um, um, just like those in, in our literature, the whole Bible, basically, right? So if I come for advice, I, it's like I know what advice, I know what questions to ask my mom and father. Like, you know, as being in this journey, what type of questions to ask them. If I ask for some financial advice, man, I go to my mom or go to my other, my other guy. Uh, but they phenomenal in that respect. You know, uh, I'm sure it's people within our community that have that uh, as well. But what I'm saying is for the question, I can ask those type of questions. Um, I can ask, if, say if I, were, if I was dating someone that's not in the truth, you know, I'd be more likely to ask you know, my mom or someone that's not in the truth because they're not in the truth. And it's like, even though I know the mindset of those that's not, it's still good to ask maybe a woman that's not in it, you know, or if I'm dating someone that is in the truth, um, I'll be more likely to ask somebody like a sister, uh, Tamar, you know, or other sisters in the truth. That's not a question to really ask my mom. Um, as far as the marriage is concerned, as far as marriage is concerned, um, from having, are you saying more so issues, like problems within us? Is, is that the question? Um, no, it's just viewpoints in general, so anything. I actually like the, the, how you're segmenting the information. Like if it's somebody that is in the, if you think somebody that's in the world, you would talk to somebody. So I just, I like that, so right. keep going. Okay, okay, I just wanna, y'all know I could do that, man, because it's nothing black and white with me. Y'all know there's so many, Let's all say it together. What do I always say? Variables. Variables. <laughs> it's so the variables. It's, there's too many variables with it. Um, but to just sum it up, because I'm probably winding down on my seven minutes. Um, I mean, I, my mom got wisdom. Same as my father. I don't know if a lot of y'all that's watching know. I know those on the platform know. My father, pastor, South Side of Chicago. So, I, I mean, and he's a Christian, right? But the man got wisdom like me and him i have a full-blown out conversation on a lot of stuff even dealing within our culture and, then, and a lot of times i'm like dude so why are you not but he's been he's been a pastor since he was 30. you know uh I, when i think of something like that i remember on home what um chief zebulon be saying when he says stuff like uh some people don't want to let go of something that's been like what their teachers gave them i know i'm saying it different but it's probably along the lines of what he say. Maybe when he get on, he can speak more on that. But I mean, he my, my father held on to it, but he 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 got some wisdom. So it's based on with me. It will I have to go off the subject. I got to go off the subject. I got to go off their lifestyle. And even then, even even off their lifestyle, their wisdom can still be there. When you look at Matthew or. Um, uh, uh, Matthew, is it 20? When he talks, when it talks about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, but to do as they say, but not what they do. Is yeah. that Matthew 20? Oh, 18. I'm not sure. Okay. So I, I think it's Matthew 18 or 20. Somebody gonna correct me, but you all know what I'm talking about though. Uh, go ahead. I can, we can't hear you. What you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm over here. Yeah, yeah, my bad. No, I think, yeah, you're talking about as far as when, when he made the statement about, you know, the, that the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, therefore, whatever they bid you to do, observe and do, but don't do what they do, because they say right. don't do. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, exactly. That's the one. So I brought that in there to say this one piece, and I'm, a, I'm done after I say this. Sometimes, even if you're not, and again, I know they were part of the culture, before you say something, Chief Zebulon, but they weren't doing. They weren't doing what they was preaching. 
You know, we see that in Isaiah. We see that in Matthew 4 and 4 when he's revert, and Luke 4 and 4, I believe it is, too, when he's pinpointing from Isaiah. You know, they tell you all this, but it ain't happening. So my point is, I can take the advice from those that's not, and they can have good wisdom in that advice, and they might not be doing that advice. So yeah, I could take that too. So my, to answer your question, should the husband or wife consider the viewpoints of their parents when it comes to their marriage? Yeah, as long as it doesn't go against uh, your journey, your walk with the Most High, according to Torah. Okay, yeah, I was coming. I was yelling at kids. Um, okay, so I mean, absolutely no disrespect when I say this. Uh, because even she can tell you I'm I am 100% not a disrespectful person. But my mother is not only unmarried, but she is um a homosexual, the man one at that. So therefore, um, for me, I'm, I think I have a real good, um, good discernment and I'm good for, when I tell people, when I talk to people, I'm really strategic in who I talk to because I believe in seeking sound advice. So I will not um, ask my mother for any advice, uh, be it marital, financial, or anything, because those are, I've never seen her in a successful relationship. I've never seen her financially successful. I've never seen her even successful as a parent. So therefore, um, you are not a reliable source for me to seek that type of advice. I could, um, my way of taking advice from her or lessons from her is to um, see where she went wrong and do the opposite. Um, as far as my father taking advice for him, I just met him. Um, so I'm still filling him out. Um, yeah, so no. I cannot take advice from uh, my parents as far as my marriage go, but I will take advice from um, motherly figures that I have. I have a few women in my life that I um, I consider motherly figures and they are um, very, they're, they're not in the truth, but um, their advice is, is always amazing and it's never one-sided. It's always let me let me see your point and let me see his point and they try to meet in the middle and give um, me advice on whatever situation I'm going through so those are the people that I tend to go to with um, who I consider like my mothers and get advice from but as far as my birth mom I'm seeking advice from her like like y'all been saying I feel like it has to be you have to either be in my belief system or you have to be wise in even what you believe or whatever you follow in life, just period. You have to be a wise person in order for me to uh, deal with you. I just made a post yesterday, actually, that said, um, I'm not going to not listen to you just because you're not an Israelite. I'm not doing that. As long as you're wise and I can get you, because I got so many jewels and and wisdom from people older than me who sh wait baby who not uh, who don't consider themselves israelites but was very very smart to my financial all these things who brought so much knowledge to me so i would never shut um shut down or not listen to someone just because they aren't an israelite but you might hear me say this a lot today i will take in the meat and spit out the bones because I can't use everything, but I can use a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to just yield there. What about under that mother and father, sis? What's wrong with you? No, I'm playing. 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 
You know I'm playing, Samika. Come on. Okay. Um, and wait, wait. For those that's listening that might not know me, it's a lot of variables. So when I say that, it's nothing bad. I'm, I believe in honoring your mother and father, all that stuff. But, you know, I'm playing with her, too. She knows where I'm going with it. Just don't want to offend nobody listening in. All right. Um. Yeah, that wow. That's that's a lot to uh, a lot to unpack uh, with that. But but just, I, I, you know, just as far as what um what Shamika said, you know, with with not I guess taking advice from her mother, you know, I, I mean, for the obvious reason, I mean, you know, we don't have to, you know, have to dance around it. Uh, it is what it is. I, and I I think that that in 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 that case, that's I mean, it's sound. I mean, I mean, what can a <laughs> It's kind of like in like like when I look at let's say someone in my family who is um you know uh, very promiscuous like I have females in my family that is extremely prom- hey I can't there's certain conversations that we can't have because I already know that if I if I get if, if I'm asking you advice well let's say if I'm talking with a muscle one of my uncles I already know, I already know what they're trying their thing is you know get up in it and skate. So I know that they have an anti, they have an anti relationship or an anti honor um, platform or doctrine with them. That's all, their whole thing is in, out, you know, whatever like that, like Martin, whatever the case and keep it moving. So I know that any information I get from them is going to be from the vantage point of someone who doesn't even honor relationships, period. So even with that, I mean, you have to, tweet that you have to listen i mean I, you know I, I listen to anything but listening and applying is two different things i listen to everything i study everything if anybody who knows my book collection i go in on everything and anything but not everything penetrates my soul you know what i'm saying that's the holy of the holy so every certain things no you stay out on the outside of the, of the court you say in the, the outer court but you're in the court, but just not in the inner court. And so, so I, I listen. I, I I feel what the sister's saying. I feel what she's saying. It's just like, hey, what can you tell me about a functional relationship? Because not only not only are you not functioning, but your orientation is not functional. So therefore, I, I can't take anything from that source. Um, and just like her, I have people in my family that are in that same, you know, in that same lane. And, you know, and I swerve right past that. Like, nah, no, thank you. No, thank you. Because your orientation is unnatural. So your, your advice is going to be unnatural. And I can't, I can't, I can't go for that. So, um, but there was a point that there was something that uh, Shema said uh, that uh, he had made reference to something that I said uh, pertaining to the subject. And I'm trying to remember the precise uh, point that it was, um, about um, he was he was he, he was trying, trying to quote something too. and then I'm trying to think. I remember. Give me one second. Go ahead. Maybe yeah. I'll... But um, but just, but but just along the lines of the question, just so I can just to, uh, kind of bring it back to the center. Um, I think that under under normal circumstances, <laughs> under normal circumstances, um, yes, I think we should consider um our parents' uh, viewpoints, you know, just like the, just like the uh, question says, yes, we should consider their viewpoints. We should consider anybody's viewpoints. Whether or not we apply it is a completely different story. And that depends on, like Shema says, it depends on the circumstances. In a situation, you know what? Okay, yeah, they may not be a Hebrew, but you know what? That's some sound advice right there. I can go for that. And I can, I can extract it. Then there's been advice that I've gotten, you know what I'm saying, that I've heard from fellow Hebrews, and I'm like, really, dude? Eh, nah, you have a devil on you. <laughs> so, it, you know, and so I think, I think with anything that we, you know, we do, there has to be, you know, we have to be circumspect, like the Lord tells us, we have to be circumspect in all things. Um, but of course, when you're amongst fellow Hebrews, fellow Torah keepers, there's a certain level of comfortability that you know that, okay, nine times, nine times out of 10, I'm going to get sound advice because I know where they're coming from. They're coming from the same source. So like um, you know, most I bless his memory when Chief of Chief Naphtali was um was still um, um amongst us, anything that came out of his mouth pertaining to relationships, 
pertains to whatever like that, I was inclining. To my, I was inclining my ear. Why? Because I saw the fruits of his labor. Man married for 58, 59 years. Nobody has a marriage lasting that long and not be able to tell you what you need to be doing. Um, and plus, the last time that he gave me a, a relationship advice, I didn't heed. And of course, I, I, I reaped the, uh, you know, I reaped what I sowed. So with that, with that said, you know, when you know the people that are around you and you know that they've been around and that they, they move in a certain way, like Shaman said, that they, you know, that they not only talk it, but they lived it. You have now a certain assurity, like, you know what? Yes, I can listen to what they're saying and I can apply it because I've seen them apply it. And it's so, and, you know, and even though we're all individuals, it probably will work for me as well. So, you know what? I'm going to consider that. So I think that, yes, I think we should consider the viewpoints of all of our parents, but be circumspect as to um, how and, um, and if we'll even apply it to our actual lives. But we can still take the viewpoint and put it in our Rolodex. That's just wisdom, period. I mean, you know, and, uh, like Shamika said, you know, you know, uh, eat the meat, spit out the bones and the fat. So. Right. Uh, so, yes. Um, I, as everybody as everybody was talking, I was thinking about, because uh, when I was married, my father was had already passed and my mother, I wasn't talking to my mom like that. So, um, uh, but I was just thinking now about the information that our parents gave us coming up and if it was even good for us. So that's another way to look at the information. Like, for example, if you was, a, uh, you know, if your mom, if your parents, I'm not saying mom, because we blame the black woman too many times. If the parent was really, really liberal, <laughs> if the parent was really, really, Oh my God. Okay. Um, if the parents were really, really liberal and, and, and raising up you, right, you wouldn't necessarily want your child to be raised up the same way. So if, um, and then we, let's also say this, because this is really what I'm trying to get to. I know I'm kind of rambling. But grandparents, for the most part, the older you get, the, the, the more chill you get, right? So a lot of grandparents think that it's okay to like give in to the kid crying and blah, 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 right? So you wouldn't necessarily take that advice, even though it's your parent, and you know, you're like, I don't want uh, such and such to eat all this candy. And they're like, oh, yeah, he's just a kid. You know, let him do whatever. You ain't gonna necessarily rock with that. So I guess the only thing I would add again to the conversation is, yes, you listen to information, but you also uh, test it against you. Did, was it beneficial to you? When they was, because everything our parents taught us was not good, good wisdom. For example, my father, uh, Hebrew, knew he was a Hebrew, trying to keep the laws the best that he could. Um, excellent parent, by the way. Um, but he used to teach us to not, you know, uh, when we go to Walgreens in Chicago on, I think it was 71st and Jeffrey, right? So we go to the Walgreens, what was it 71st? It was a little past. Huh? Oh, shot sound. <laughs> but it was, it was Jeffrey, but it was, I think it was like 71st, but a little past that. But anyway, we used to go up there and we were going, and it would all be, it all be somebody outside that would be begging for money. And he would tell me, don't give them nothing. Now that's bad advice. So I grew up being real stingy, you know what I'm saying, to strangers and stuff. And I, but when you read the book, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I struggled with it myself and I had to push myself to not be that way. So that's an example that his intention again was not to be mean. I'm sure he was like, I'm gonna protect my daughter. I'm not gonna let her be digging in her purse and somebody do something to it. So he was doing that. You know, in his mind, I'm sure, as a way to be like, I'm going to make sure she's straight. But again, the information that, we're get, we're, that we get from whoever, especially our parents, not always good advice. But, um, but I think that it's good to, and, it didn't, and of course, it's, it's always good to, uh, if we get bad information and we apply it, to learn from that as well. Because we don't always know the end of something until we apply it as well. So we don't want to shut up our parents at all. And we're not going to always know. But I think... Every household obviously is going to be different with this question. I think it's meant to be that. So there's no definitive answer for anybody. I think you know what information makes sense for your kids and your household and what's not. So and 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 whatever you decide, that's okay because it's your house. So that's the other thing 
as we're talking, let's not forget that we're talking about marriages that are separate from any, any other family members, and it's on purpose. So, all right. Um, so uh, let me see. Go ahead. Oh, no, but just to your point, and I think, but I think also, Shema, matter of fact, Shema, you can bring out your point because I actually saw you um, chiming in first. So, I was just going to say, I have all the answers. No, I'm playing. <laughs> That's it. That, 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 that sound Israelite doctrine right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, everything. No, I wanted to uh, real quick because she said something about um, the help, you know, giving money to somebody. Real quick, man. Real quick. I try to be as quick as possible. I remember when I was, uh, I went to uh, ILG. Uh, appreciate going to ILG. It, you know, catapulted me where I'm at now. But uh, I remember a brother that was there. He was fairly new in the truth. And we was at a, a brother of ours at the time, uh, by the name of Franco House. And um, we was going through the scriptures or whatever. And he said, yeah, man, you know, on Shabbat, I ain't giving nobody. You know, I'm going straight to the to ILG. I ain't stopping for no uh, uh, um, body that's homeless or giving them no food. You can't buy on Shabbat. I'm like, wait, wait, bro. I said, I get it. I know what's taught. I get it. I understand the doctrines. But you telling me, if you see a homeless dude, don't got no shoes, got some shorts on in wintertime, and ain't, ain't nothing, you're not going to stop? And he basically said no. But I went through and showed him what, you know, uh, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jesus, was bringing out. And then it changed his you know, his his mind on that. And then I showed him Torah too. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all know it stems from that, but, you know, I wanted to go where he knew. And he knew Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Even though he was just like, he ain't no Torah like that. They don't think, you know, Torah is there, but, you know, he was just like, he went Mark, Mark uh, Matthew, Luke, and John. So I took him there and changed his whole, you know, Glory to the Most High, of course, but changes outlook on it. But it's a, I wanted to say it's a lot of people that's like what you're talking about. It's a lot of people that's, and it's due to what's being taught too, by the way. Doctrine without study. But well, go ahead. My bad. Thanks for the, uh, the homeless talk. <laughs> the being homeless. serious, man. <laughs> Not being funny. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and, and just to, and just, uh, just to that point as well, that I think that, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, not to get too far off, whatever, but when we talk about doctrine, these things are necessary. E even even that, that particular understanding of, you know, yo, I ain't giving nobody nothing, Shabbat ain't giving no money. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's good in the beginning because everybody needs that initial fence because when you're first coming in, you have, the, it, you don't know, there's no order whatsoever. You're all over the place. So you need that fence. It's just like when we're children, when your parents say, you can go out on the stoop and play. And then you get a little bit older, all right, then you can go down the block right there, but you can't go past that light post. And then you get a little older, okay, you can go a couple blocks over there, but don't go past that street, you know, that street, that's the limit. Then you get to a limit to the point where your parents are like, hey, go wherever you need to go, but be safe. Call me if you need me. So we all need that in the beginning. Like, when I first came into the into, into the truth, um, if you even began to hum a secular song on the Shabbat, uh, you were that might it might not go well with thee. <laughs> Brother's gonna be like, "Yo, that's wicked as hell. What the hell are you doing? Go repent." So you know, um, and you and, you know, and if you're coming from home and you're going to the camp, you could only carry a certain amount of books with you. You had to have your Hebrew. You had to have your Tanakh. Your Hebrew, uh, I mean, your Tanakh, your English Bible, your um, a notebook, the, the the basics. Anything more than that, you were bearing a physical burden on the Shabbat. You were breaking the Shabbat. So everybody was like, okay, you know what? All right, I'm not, I'm not going to get my Hebrew Bible, my English. I'm going to get the Tanakh with the English already in it. So that kind of cuts down the weight of the book back. So, but those things were good because it gave us order. Then, of course, when you have that initial order, then you can expand. After that, you know, like, like Shema said, then you can start kind of, hmm, you know what, all right, that can kind of, you know, all right, yeah, it's not about money, or whatever like that. It's about what I'm doing with the money. Am I, you know, am I being a merchant or am I helping somebody? Okay, 
and then you can kind of expand from there. So all of these things is good in the beginning or whatever like that. It's just the expansion is what's important. Can you expand from that initial, you know, or are you just going to stay on the stoop for the rest of your life? Um, you know, um, but there was something else I have, I, I was going to make a comment about, uh, yeah, real quick, what, what, um, what, what Sister Tamar said uh, pertaining to people giving advice, you know, as far as what is the intention, sometimes, you know, the knowledge base may not be correct, but the intention is good, you know, like, you know, from, you know, from their perspective or whatever like that. I think about my father, you know, my father used to always say, hey, son, listen, you know, before he passed away, he was like, hey, son, listen, you know, if you want to have a, you know, you want, you want to have a happy life, man, he's like, you just got to make the women happy, man, just make sure that the women is happy, you know, and I, you know, and I, I'm like, no doubt, Pop. You know, and, and you'd have to under, you'd have to know him to understand where that's coming from. You know, he's a, a reformed playboy. You know, ironically, funny how things play out. Whatever he was, just, but he was just like, hey, son, you know, you, you just don't want to make the women angry, man. You got to treat the women respect. You know, treat them good, son. Treat them good. You know, if they're happy, then you're happy. Now, I understand where he's coming from. I don't agree with that. Because I understand that sometimes you can be making the person happy, but you're not happy. So what was the point of all of that anyway? You you just become a slave to the you know what I'm saying to the person that you're with. You know you're making them happy, and then you're not happy. So, but I understand why he was saying it. I understood the meaning behind it. Now even though I wouldn't apply that per se, it's like nah, like no. If if you're gonna be happy, we're gonna have to do something that's gonna make us both happy. It ain't gonna be no one-sided happiness going on. We're gonna do it together. We're just not gonna do it at all. But I, but again, going back to your point, I understand, you know, like sometimes when people give you advice, the advice itself may not necessarily be sound, but the intent might be, might be sound. And you will understand where they're coming from. And sometimes the advice, the advice itself might be sound, but it might be coming from bad intentions. The person might be giving you good advice, but the intent might be to ruin your relationship. So Again, going back to what Shema said, why there's no black and white, that all things have to be kind of balanced out. You got to kind of like, you know, consider this person's, what is their integrity? What is this person's integrity? You know, what he's saying is sound, but I know he's trying to destroy my damn marriage. So you know what? I'll keep that in the Rolodex, but you're a damn devil. Let me stay away from you. But, you know, people with good intentions, but not necessarily sound advice, you know, you have to look at it and say, well, you know what? Maybe his advice needs to be tweaked a little bit. You know, maybe just tweak it or whatever, because you know that the intent is righteous. So just, it's just a matter of tweaking. So it just goes, I just, again, it just goes right back to what Shema said, that it's, it's a lot of, a lot of gray area and it's really dependent on the scenarios that will determine how you move, uh, you know, in dealing with these, um, with these different uh, uh, pieces of advice and, you know, whether to accept it or not or whatever. So I just want to just uh, acknowledge that, uh, Tamar, because when you said that about that, I was just like, hmm, you got to understand the intent of people sometimes. Before we go to the next question, real quick, I want to read. And my apologies, because I know I just went on a, 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 no, you a, a little ramble just now. I want to read what was, what was uh, what's said up in uh, Facebook real quick, if that's cool with y'all. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this is right. This is by uh, Neva, uh, Jacob, or Jacob. Uh, she said, uh, "The advice given is not always received with the same perspective as the advisors. Uh, the receiver might take it a totally different way." Uh, that's what she said, and she said, "Thanks, sis." That was me that wrote that. That's why I put slash Shema. I'm not a sis. No, I'm playing. But anyway, the, the, that was good what she said. She was like, <laughs> he said, that's right. Um, the receiver might take it a totally different way. That's true, man. That is why also to kind of, uh, and I wonder what y'all going to say to this too, but to kind of, this is why we got to, the most I tell us to come perfect as he is perfect. And in Hebrew, I said this last week, that word is tamim. You know, it's a wide spectrum of meaning and it's, it's innocent, it's blameless. But when I look at it too, it's complete. You know what I'm saying? So when you are complete, you're balanced, you have discernment, 
you are uh, someone that's doing this journey that's really observ observationist, observationalist, is that a word? You observe properly. Observational. You know what, forget you. Uh, <laughs> Hey man, look, hey, it's English, man. It's English, you know. We make words up. We go. Um, so going off what she, what I'm saying, in, in contrast to what she's saying, is um, some you, most individuals are are not balanced, so they they probably won't perceive the information that's being brought to them, especially even if it's good information. Sometimes we just won't receive it. But in, ideally, I guess we're trying to say, like, if we have, if you are someone in this truth and you're balanced and, you know, uh, you have some wisdom, discernment, you know, and you get this, uh, this uh, advice, you know, normally we, we should be able to discern and, and take that perspective properly. But I'm with her, though. I agree. Like, a lot of us, we just do, we don't take you know, what the person is trying to put out there properly and uh, take the whole message wrong. So I love that good good uh, insert there. What about y'all? Yeah, I think that's a good thing to, to keep up. I think um, just as a, a thread uh, with everything that we've been talking about since we, since, you know, since you came up with the idea to start the platform, cause that's all we're doing. I mean, we, we, got some scriptures here and there but a lot of it is like us uh standing before y'all naked you know what i'm saying saying things that we've been through or whatever and that's another source of wisdom that um you know you could take it or leave it you know what i'm saying or, or like my daddy used to always say you can either like it or lump it okay so but i think you have to be of a certain mindset to receive any kind of information because again and i when i was young i was very arrogant you know what i'm saying i thought to this day my auntie make fun of me because i told her i didn't want no kids and I'm like, I don't even remember saying that because I love, I wish I, had, wish I would have had more kids. So, but I was super arrogant, you know, so I didn't know nothing about nothing. And um, so it, we have to be open, not only on this topic, but open period to, to learn unless you want to stay, like Zebulon said, I think it's a good analogy, unless, unless you want to just stay on the stoop for the rest of your life, you know, and maybe you do, and that's cool. But the, old, but the longer we live, we should be wanting to at least try try to um be a little bit better and and to to learn from one another so shamika i know you wanted to jump in i think you was gonna jump in. oh yeah no i was gonna when you finished i was gonna say that um we when we go into uh situations because i 100 percent agree but when we go into a lot of situations especially if we seeking advice angrily depending on who we seeking advice from we always go in defensive anyway excellent so excellent excellent point yeah, if they're if they not meeting what we really feeling already, if they not taking our side basically, then we already defensive and we already ain't hearing it and negative and they could be giving some good advice. So you're right, we should go in situations open and not already defensive. That really, you know, that really bothers me though. Like when people and, I, and I'm saying that because I've done it, I've done it too as well, but. When people ask for advice, but it's really not advice that they're looking for. They're looking for cheerleaders when they're looking for someone to just reaffirm what they already want to do anyway. And someone says, oh, uh, no, 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 Zeb, that would be foolish to do. This is what you should do. The first thing you do, you get angry. Well, you, you like, no, because <laughs> you, 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 know, you didn't really want advice. You really wanted someone to just reaffirm what you already were going to do anyway. So, yeah, like what the sister said, it's just, you know, if you want advice, you got to, you know, you got to accept the, uh, the possibility that someone's going to tell you something that is going to rock your core a little bit. You know, that's, that's part of the learning process. You know, and again, it goes back to the idea that, you know, like, with, with, you know, younger people, when we were, you know, when we were younger, you know, in our teens and early 20s, the problem with young people was that they think they know everything and they haven't even left, they haven't left the stoop yet. You know, and it's like, you know, then, then the older people, you know, they, they have all of this information but they might be too old to really implement it the way that they need to in their youth. So it's like, that's why they say that the, they say that um, youth is wasted on the young. I, I, I understand that now. So that's it. Indeed. So we're going to go ahead and go to the, uh, welcome again, those who have joined us uh, online. Happy Sabbath, if you observe it. 
if not good day. Um, uh, okay, here we go. So the, the next question is, this is, and we've been talking anyway along uh, the way, so that now it's a, a proper, it's a good segue to the next question, which is how do you properly address an interfering in law? So let's just say you didn't ask for no advice, but here comes such and such being like, you know what you should do? How do you properly address that? All right, my bad. I was I was uh coming into uh Akhmore uh Hayim. So you said how do we properly address an interfering in law that you basically didn't ask for their advice? Um you asking me, right, personally? <laughs> yeah, yo bring it off. Uh, uh me, man. Kind of before I even answer the question, I was just about to say uh, it, it kind of is going to relate to, you know, what I'm about to say. But what you was just talking about, you and Zed was talking about, um, like when I give advice, if somebody asks me a question, first thing I say is, do you want objective advice? Because everything I put out there, I try to be objective as possible. And that's the thing people more want um, friendship, subjective advice from you. So if somebody comes and they're trying to give me advice and I didn't ask for it, it kind of depends on the situation. Like, are we talking like I'm at work or something and then, you know, I'm eating. This actually happened to me before too. I'm sitting there eating and somebody was just sitting next to me and started talking to me type stuff. In that situation, I'm just going to listen more than anything. Um, if I'm talking with someone and then somebody just happened to hear it, you know, I probably, I don't know, man, that's a good question. It's never really like happened in the, go ahead. What you so, so, so the context would be, for example, if you are, you know, if you're married and, and the mother-in-law, cause you know, mother-in-laws get bad rap, so I'm going to use them. Mother-in-law is just, she won't stay out your business. You know what I'm saying? You are having a conversation with your wife and, you know, she talking to your wife in her ear and then now oh, the mother-in-law's in your business. There we go. Thank yeah, that's, you. that's the context, my bad. Yeah. yeah, first of all, that wouldn't happen with me. So it's, 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 this is not really a question for me because remember, we the type of people that talk about Courtney, right? So I know she's like, here we go. But look, listen, what I'm saying is in the courting process, everything is established for me, will be, you know what I'm saying? Whoever I'm with, we got to establish everything in the courting process and then have it set before this stuff even happened with the parents. Uh, I will have to sit down and they'll know how I am. They'll know how I operate initially. It's just like a precursor. They ain't gonna know everything because they're, they're just finding out about me or learning about me, even in, in the early marriage part. But one thing that I'm going to establish is, you know, I think one of you all said it. You know, of course, we're going to take your advice. We want to learn. Is that Hoodie John? Oh no! Like for hoodie, you so stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm? Hey, I'm sorry, y'all. We've been waiting for hoodie John to show up forever, man. But let me finish my statement. I'll be done in like one minute, and then I gotta say my what's up to to, to John boy, hoodie John. I mean, uh, anyway, in the beginning, um, I, I want to have all that established because it's not going to be like you said. She's always in our, our business because that will be established initially. You know, look, you know, we respect you. We, we honor you as far as you being a mom of, the, of, of my uh, Isha or whatever, and or my wife. And, you know, of course, we're going to come for advice if we need it. But uh, all that, just being in our business type stuff, that's, that's, that's not going, going to happen. It's not like I'm coming and like, hey, this was going to happen. But no, it's just really, it's, we got to set, the, set the, the, the board, set the board in the beginning. You know, so that's not happening. So I can't even, I can't really answer the question. I can't really answer the question because it's not happening. Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. That's it. Tora, huh? <laughs> D'Amico, bring it out. Okay, well, so I guess I'll give two scenarios. Disclaimer, everything is, is great now. But I'll give two, I mean, not disclaim. Oh, yeah, I'll give two examples. So the first example would be 
the relationship uh, with what we had, our, me and John had. So there was a scenario what, where his mom had um, got into, like, well, she said, she mentioned something about um, our relationship, and that made her, like, mad at me or whatever the case. But I technically didn't do nothing wrong. Um, but she was, she witnessed like an argument. So of course it's her son. She'll take her son's side. So she did that. And we didn't talk for a long time. I don't, I don't know how, you know, I, they was like, apologize, apologize. And me, I'm a really, really bullheaded, strong-minded person. So I'm like, I ain't going to apologize for something I didn't do. Like I didn't do anything to her. This was between me and him. Because I, the argument, I never, never argue with her. So um, I ended up apologizing like a week later or some days later, but through text messages, she never replied. So I just never said nothing. So when I would go over her house or whatever, I would sit in the car and wait on them to bring the kids out. Like I wouldn't go in there, nothing. It was not until, and I know now, if I ever have an issue, I'm going to grandma. Because it wasn't until my mother-in-law's mother checked her and told her you know that's between them stay out of their business go get that girl and tell her to bring her butt in this house so then she came out to the car like girl why are you sitting in this car and you know we talked and you know cleared the air so we never even had that issue again but it wasn't even me that had to say something to her it was her mom who kind of put her in her place like that's their relationship if he fine with his relationship you shouldn't be this angry so the next scenario was how to deal with parenting and then the grandparents because my mother-in-law felt some type of way about we, should, we shouldn't put the kids in the corner. She didn't want us to pop them, nothing. Because, of course, they're her grandbabies, so she wanted to spoil them. She felt like they shouldn't be in trouble. When we – we kept letting it go on, but we would, like, jokingly say something. But it wasn't until, like, we was dead, dead serious, and she saw that we was dead serious, that she kind of understood. And it wasn't until one of my kids said something to her that she kind of understood. So when she seen that we were serious and we kind of pulled back from, like, coming around a little bit, then she was like, oh, okay. But she did not know what she was doing. Like, she didn't know. She, did, she wasn't being malicious or nothing like when we brought it to her attention she was like what like i don't remember saying this i don't remember i don't remember it coming across like that because that's not how she meant it but that's how we received it so then once we told her hey this is how this is making us feel when you say this to us or when you do this while we're trying to parent them you make us feel like we don't know what we're doing or we ain't good parents and she was like no that ain't my intent that wasn't her intent at all so you really have to communicate and express yourself because you could be taking something one way and that's not even how the person is meaning it. Or you can offend somebody and you not meaning to offend them, but you have. So you got to communicate. Y'all, y'all, you have to be able to sit down and be grown and express yourself and not do that. Well, this my man and that's my son type thing. You know what I'm saying? Cause at this point we are family and we have to come together. And I don't know if I'm rounding my point off because I forgot the question, but I know I said the two right things. <laughs> no, that's an excellent example. I'm glad you gave a, uh, uh, an example that considered the other, that considered the in-laws perspective, which we don't, that's good to have a balanced conversation. Yeah. So I'm going to yield with that. I wanted to say something to her real quick. Uh, I love she brought the two different scenarios. And that's why, you know, going into what she was saying, uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, what I had said previous, you know, I said, man, that's not gonna happen. Y'all know I do everything in love. So, you know, communication is great when you are, if you do have that, you know, just try to talk to them. But it can all be established in the courting process, y'all. You get all this established in the courting process, man, you know, they'll know. And then, like she said, she didn't even know that she did anything wrong. Sometimes, you know, this is their custom to do that. This is the the parents. They might have five or six kids, children, right? Uh, that they had, and they did this with every last one of them. Now you have a different man and or a woman 
that's in the truth that abides by the literature, the Torah, or you know, the Bible, then it's it's a different playing field. So establishing in the beginning, because the parents might be accustomed to doing something their way. If you establish it in the beginning, they might still do it, but it's gonna take some getting used to, but at least it won't be like what Tamar was saying over, over, and over. So that's what I was saying, but just doing it in love, man. And, and appreciate those scenarios, Shamika. D, that, that, um, I, back in 1990, there was, a, there was an entire song dedicated to that subject by K Solo. Your mom's in my business. She's in my business. In my business. Can't you see, girl, your mom's trying to end this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, hey, if you don't tell your mom to mind the business, <laughs> I'm going to let, let you go, whatever. But, you know, but the understanding, of course, um, in all seriousness, is that um, when you look at how, when you look at how uh, the kingdom, in the Torah, well, in the Tanakh, is set up. When you had kings that sat on the throne, king, queen, or whatever, or even if it's just a household situation where you have, you know what I'm saying, the Lord and the Lordess in the house. But in the case of a king, all kings had counselors that they, you know, that they lean to like, hey, you know, so they, what do you think about a uh, situation? What do, you, what do you think? And they'll give the advice, but the understanding was what? that the counselor knew at all times that he's the king. So let me be respectful, present my advice, but hey, this is the advice, but you're still the king. So hey, you know, I think a lot of times in-laws, they, they forget, they might forget that, hey, with all due respect to who you are and you being the grand, you know, parents or whatever, with all due respect to that, in this kingdom, there is a Lord and there is a Lordess. There's only two masters in this house, with of course the most high above it. But once we once the most high, once we deal with that, it is the husband and the wife. They are the two lords of that house. And anybody else's information, anybody else can only play the role of counselor that we can seek counsel from, but they always give that counsel with the understanding that we're counselors, that we are not co-lording in this house. No, no, no. That's why like Shema brought it out in the very beginning of the show. When a man <laughs> departs from his mother and his father and his mother, cleaves unto his wife and they two become one. So there's an understanding that yes, we, we can extract the wisdom from you guys over there and you guys over there and the mother-in-law, we get all of that good information. But at all times, you are counselors. You are not co-reigning. You're not, you know, it, it, there is no co-regnal situation here. It is me and my wife with the most highs our head and everybody else are counselors. And I think if you make that clear from the very beginning and assert that understanding, they'll have no choice but to respect it because it's either that or <laughs> or what? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you don't want to get to the point where you're telling them, hey, you can't come over. <laughs> you can't come over to whatever like that. But there has to be an understanding that, you know, because we've, we, we've seen even in not only music, but just in real life, that sometimes you have uh, parents who may have ulterior motives. Um, let's say a, um, a mother-in-law who, who has a history of bad relationship. They've never had a functional relationship. So when they see their daughter achieving what they never could, a part of them, there's an element of envy there. It's the same thing with fathers. Sometimes a father may have been in very barrage their entire life, then they see their son finding something that they could not find, and they may feel a little bit bitter. This is the reason why a lot of parents, they try to live their life through their children whatever like that to, to kind of compensate for what they were lacking from the very beginning. But you have sometimes, you have um, mothers or fathers that they'll come in intentionally or unintentionally will try to um, decimate that relationship because they don't know any better. So when they see better, a part of them feels like, who are they to have that? It's just like, the, it's just like a sister who has girlfriends 
you know, girl, you know, the sister might be going through a problem with her boyfriend or whatever, whatever the relationship is, and you get those the females who never seem to have a man, always trying to tell her, yeah, girl, see, you know, he, you know, all men are dogs. If I was you, I wouldn't. I'm like, well, wait a minute, but you've never been, you, you've always been in dysfunctional relationships. I can't, you know, because they're mad because you are achieving what they're not. They haven't been able to achieve. So we got to also be mindful of that, and that's the reason why we put that fence around the kingdom, that in this kingdom, the most high, the Lord, the Lordess, and every, everything else are satellites revolving around that central body. Everybody else is satellites, you know. And so, you're saying, so you're saying you believe the earth is round? Is that what you just said? I see what oh, you just said. Oh no, my sister, I do not believe that, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, but nonetheless, you know, ju you know, just like, you know, Joseph, you know, like, hey, you know, you know, hey, I'm the, oh, everybody's revolving around, it, it's, there's an understanding that, listen, you know, and, and the wife, and, you know, and, and the wife has to understand that as well, especially if it's a mother-in-law situation, like, listen, no disrespect to your, your mom, whatever like that, but understand something, I, and I think there was a perfect movie, and I'll make this uh, my last point, that movie, um, we spoke. We spoke about it before with Morris Chestnut and um Taraj B Henson. Um, oh, acrimony. Was it called acrimony? No, the, the um not easily broken, and Jennifer Lewis was oh, in there. Oh, and Jennifer Lewis was the mother-in-law. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah an excellent movie, and, and uh, you know Morris Chestnut's character was like, "Yo, listen, um, because you know her, the mother-in-law kept trying, you know, basically trying to like it was almost like ruining the relationship, and he was like that in this relationship." It's been it's been you and your mother. He was like, I've never had an equal vote in this relationship. It's always been you and your mom. Me, I'm just yeah, I'm just here. I just pay bills. That's all I do. I'm just. It, it was a very. If you ever get a chance to see that movie, um, not easily broken. Excellent movie, um, from both angles. But I, but again, I just think that when you establish those boundaries, and so that everybody else outside understands that when I when I invoke your name or invoke you to give me advice or whatever, it's only as a counselor, not as a co-regnal or co-reigning person in this kingdom. No, there's only one king and one queen in here with an overseer above us. Outside of that, everybody is counselors and revolves around us. At least from my, at least from my vantage point. I just want to say something. I appreciate that. I want to say, um... Those of you that's tuning in, we do appreciate you. I said we got some, um, some new people tuning in. Um, this is a great topic. So if you want to say anything in the comments, uh, if you want to actually come on the Zoom platform with us, speak audibly or speak visually or just comment, you can too. It's more so in real time. On Facebook, it's probably like a 10, 15 second lag or something like that. Um, the link is actually in the description. You can click that, or you can stay on Facebook. So I just wanted to say that I let the uh, the hostess take back over and, and bring Hoodie John in. What up, Hoodie? Hoodie John, boy. So, so yeah. So um, I'm not sure if he wants to speak or not, but John, if you want to, uh, you can unmute your mic and say something. Hey, Kaim, you can go after him, and then I I speak last. Uh, I just want to, you know. Uh, greet everybody. Speak a little, speak a little louder, you want to talk? Yeah, my, my phone broke, so I ain't gonna hold y'all. So okay, yeah, I got you. To, to join in and, and uh, just greet everybody, and and uh, uh, you know, maybe in the future I can I can really uh, be a part of it. But you know, right now I just want to you know see how everything working, and, and so I ain't a so I ain't a burden on trying to maneuver around the show. So yeah, man, I uh, I think it's a good topic. Uh, I, all I really want to say is, um, I mean, you know, when we see that in the scriptures say uh, a man's supposed to leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife, I think uh, that could be dangerous too. Uh, uh, Chief Chief Zebulon was mentioning something about counsel, and and uh, we do need to take some advice from our parents when we dealing with, you know, people that we, you know, say we want to be with because they got experience, so they know people more than we would know people. So I just try to balance it out, you know, in life. You just want to have a, a good balance of people giving you some advice and you not just saying, oh, you just a hater and not really taking all advice and not really allowing yourself to make a decision. 
So just balancing it out, I think that's uh that's something that we probably need to practice more. So that, yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't know if y'all can hear me, but that's it. That's right. Appreciate that hoodie. Tell John, boy, I said, what up? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, the, that, that term always has me rolled. When I hear me, it'd be like, yo, hoodie. I'm like, who, who, who yo, who's hoodie? They're like, yo, John, boy. I'm like, oh, really? Hoodie, John? I'm like, okay, no doubt. No doubt. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm like, hoodie. <laughs> The floor is yours, uh, Achmore Chaim. Okay, all praises. Uh, shalom, everybody. Uh, yeah, I, I really think Chief uh, really summed it up as far as dealing with in-laws. It's just really the understanding of that's all that we can receive from y'all is advice. And depending on, uh, I guess for me, where it could get sketchy, I haven't had this dilemma myself because uh, my mother is not at all involved in my relationship. She, she and I don't even have uh, dealings like that. And that's a whole nother story within itself. But uh, if anybody wants to know, because I know a lot of people really look at, oh, how does a man have a relationship with his mom and he married, blah, blah, blah. Hit me up and I'll be happy to tell you about that. So, but anyway, sticking to the topic. Um, my wife's mom is actually in the truth. And uh, she... Uh, doesn't intervene as to my knowledge uh in in our disputes or whatever anything involving with my house so uh what i can say to the respect of my mother-in-law because i do respect and love her is when i was actually in california my phone courting of my wife it was actually uh my mother-in-law who convinced my wife toward the side of dealing with me because she wasn't interested in that in the beginning. And it was her mother that uh, I found favor with who I guess we could say persuaded her daughter to at least invest time in us speaking. So um, I actually, me personally, uh, I have elders that I can go to, you know, brothers uh, and mothers in the truth that I know and have known and that I know I can get advice from. But uh, if push came to shove and I needed to speak uh, to my mother-in-law about her daughter so I can get an insight because her mother knows her better than I probably ever will, I wouldn't have a problem doing that because I do believe that her mother would be honest with me uh, and tell me uh, what or how she thinks I should go about dealing with whatever instance it may, it may be. So, um, you know, that's that her mother calls and, and says what's up to us, you know, occasionally. So, and I'm sure her, my wife and her mother speak probably often, but I don't have the issue again because it's never been a thing of my mother said and, and my mother knows and it hasn't been that. So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for uh, the ask, the, the, the way that her mother is in our lives uh, because it could have been a bad thing. But um, yeah, I, again, Chief Zebulon really summed that up. That's, that's basically it. It's just everybody is just a counselor and giving, uh, you know, your truth of the advice of the situation to better our situation. And unfortunately, like also was said, uh, Envy can come in because a parent is upset that their child is actually happy and they weren't. So all these things are something that needs to be taken into consideration when receiving counseling. But uh, I all praises for those who do have upright uh, in-laws that give good counseling and, and are active in, you know, the children's lives so forth and so on. Because all that is, is healthy, I think, in, in the family structure. So... That's that's pretty much all I got, y'all. I'm a, I'm a yield with that. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that's actually beautiful that she she pulled a uh 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 Abraham servant move when <laughs> but the other way around. You you get me? Okay, that's dope. Bring, bring it out. Bring it out. All right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, and I wonder how how often that happens. I think that 
that's that's like protocol anyway. So anyway, that's good. Um, and then the other thing that I will add in the conversation, because I know we, you know, we always talk about beforehand and making sure things are understood. And like Shamaya said, they, you know, somebody could come out of a weird bag later on and start acting crazy and being real, the parent might start interfering and stuff like that. But what would you? So I guess so I guess I would want to talk to those or, or say something to, to people who are in it. They didn't necessarily go that route where stuff was, uh, you know, in the courting phase or dating phase for those who don't necessarily subscribe to court, the concept of courting. Um, and they, you know, didn't talk about none of this stuff. They was just kicking it, hanging out, you know what I'm saying? And bam, you got pregnant. Now you got to get married. So now you're having kids and, um, and now, the, now the parents are, you know, really, really involved and giving advice. I would say that First and foremost, it would be the responsibility of the child of the air quote interfering parent to say something in private. Um, I don't think that I'm not a fan of uh, um, confrontation. Um, so, so I can only imagine how bad it could get if you know um, the parent, you know, the interfering parent is is saying stuff and y'all both together like. You know, mama, you know what I'm saying? Get out of my face. Daddy, you know, we ain't talking to you. You know, you don't, you don't never want to get it to that, want to get to that point because you have, like, kids are watching. They could be watching, right? And you don't want to teach your children to disrespect their parent, their grandparents. So it's a, it's a tough, touchy topic, but I would say that if these, if that instance is happening where there's constant division, you know, it might even be just, uh, you know, definitely the, the, the child or the parent, it's their responsibility, period, right? But if that doesn't work, then uh, as a couple pulling that person or but maybe maybe both parents pulling them to a side and then doing and then you know killing them with kindness like taking them out to dinner and having a conversation and when everybody's calm talking about it as opposed to when you're in your feelings and you're angry about it a lot of times um when there's drama or conflict in relationships it's because uh like somebody said earlier about um you know when you mad i think it should make it you know when you mad about something now you want to ask a question and want to get advice. The same thing with the interfering parent. You don't want to address them right when you're mad and irritated because that never pans out, you know. So uh, keeping that in mind, um, and that's all I have to say about that. So the last question, and I'm going to, again, put it in the, um, the chat box, but it's what strategies are helpful in preserving the sanity of the entire family? So now we've taken a, uh, we going back, you know, uh, from the from the media details I'm looking at, what can we do collectively to make sure that everybody is um, thriving? Because uh, we don't want to cut our parents off. We shouldn't. We should never want that. And we don't want to have our ch children be cut off um, from that that wisdom that is necessary to uh, to continue to build. Whatever. So that's the question. So I'm gonna wait till you type the question out so I can get exactly, you know what I'm saying? This is not an Illuminati side that I'm doing, so don't be out, he's Illuminati. I was, you know, you know how people, man. Uh, repent, I, the, 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 <laughs> repent. I ain't <laughs> part of no Illuminati, y'all. Repent saying, to man. come up off that third degree, bro. I, I see, I see. All right, let me see. What strategies are helpful in preserving the sanity of the entire family? That's easy, man. That's the most, that's the most easiest question I've read in a long time. The answer, communication. That's it. Communication is the biggest thing, period. Now communication is, it's a wide um, definition of all the communication from my perspective. Uh, communication also is how you communicate. You know, you know how some people say well you know we don't communicate you know but people say oh we did talk about it this and that blah blah, blah. and it's not really the communicating that execute executes progress or lack of progress it's the way we communicate it like she was saying a couple of you all said like it might not be the right time to say certain things so you need to know when to communicate um, it, not, it might not be how you're, you know, what you said, your advice could have been great. Your talking could have been 
cool as far as talking about the subject, but how did you deliver it? That'd be the biggest thing. A lot of times I see with a lot of people in arguments and people that talk to me or whatever about certain things, it literally be how you say something. That'd be like the biggest thing. You can be saying the most amazing thing in the world, but how you said it. And here's another thing, going back into what uh, uh, the sister had brought out, uh, Sister Jacob had brought out, um, the perception of the communication can be off too. So it's like, it's, it's so many variables within this question, <laughs> but the answer is communication. Um, I would say this, sometimes too, the advice that's given, if it's not perceived correctly, it could be also because the communication has not been consistent between you and that individual. So if you had a consistent communication factor with you and that individual, you will be able to perceive the delivery of that individual. Excellent, excellent point. That's just a, and I hate saying this, but from my perception, a fact. Like I can literally say something to my cousin and his wife right now. I could say it in the meanest way. And they can, they knew me for so many years, first and foremost, they know how I deliver things. They won't perceive it to be messed up because they know the consistency of how I've been operating. So a lot of times we perceive things wrong from the person delivering because we have not consistently dealt with them. So to answer your question, strategies that are helpful is the, the, mo the most important thing is, is communication. When you start to communicate, making sure you put that at the forefront of everything. That's why I bring out Corden too, um, of everything. And it will, it can eliminate a lot of mishaps and things that might go wrong. You know, be proactive and not reactive. Be proactive and not reactive. And a lot of these things that we go through will seize, you know, um, these are things that I, I've seen you know, my life, my situations, things I've seen on people I dealt with who came to me, things I've seen through you all, as far as when I say you all, I'm talking about social media. Communication is the biggest thing, and that's it. That's my answer. Okay. So my answer was communication as well, but um, it was like a little bit different. For everybody to keep their sanity, if that's what I'm getting, like for the family as a whole to keep their sanity, I think that the husband and wife should do everything in their power to um, dead whatever situation or whatever is going on between the two of them before they involve any in-laws. And I don't think you should go to your in-laws with everything because that can put them in a, a tight situation, you know what I'm saying? And you don't want it to always be conflict. You don't want them to always think everything is negative or the marriage may not be going right. So I say only involve them when necessary because it's not always necessary. And you don't want them to have to feel like they might have to pick sides or, you know, anything like that. So I say try to handle it between the two of y'all and involve them as less as possible. And when you do involve them, try not to make it, make it more so as a, I'm trying to learn, I'm looking for advice type thing versus this going on, pick my side type thing. And then spend time, family time. All y'all need to spend time together because it's easy for the mother of someone or the father of someone to pick that child's side because they know their child. So if y'all not having family time and they not actually getting to know your partner and loving your partner, then of course your side is going to, they, they always going to pick their child's side because they're like, I don't really know dude like that. So my daughter right or my son is right. Me and we, it's been years and years and years. And I'm going to say even for the first maybe five years, it wasn't, we, we know we spent a lot of time together, but I don't think we like got to know, know each other. But now that she knows me as a, like who I am, it's no longer his side or my side, it's the right side. And she just 
give advice. She don't down nobody. She don't down me. She don't down him. She don't nothing. If I go to her with anything, she just talk to me or listen to me. The conversation end and I love you. I'll check on you later. So you have to handle it between y'all two. Go to them only when necessary and when you really, really want advice. And spend family time. Get to know get to know them so that they get to know you and so that y'all build a, a great family unit and bond. And all advice will then be wisdom and good advice and only for the elevation of your marriage. So that's my answer too. Yeah, that, that's um uh, excellent stuff. So I I'm not even gonna try to top that. What I'll what I'll do is I'm gonna camel back off of what uh <laughs> what y'all already said and just from a different perspective, and that is um like when we're dealing with in-laws and you know and advice and all of these things in order to kind of maintain peace, I think I think that we have to make them understand that we value their advice. You can value something without actually implementing it. But even when we speak to, let's say if, if I have, a, if, let's say if, you know, if, you're, if my father-in-law is saying, hey, listen, you know, I think, you know, in this particular, in whatever the scenario is, I think that you should do this, that, and the third, or whatever like that. Going back to what Shema says, how you, how you respond will make, you know what I'm saying, will, you know, will, will, will determine if the relationship will be a failure or, you know what I'm saying, it'll be a great thing. The response to that shouldn't be, you know, dismissive. You know, it could be something like, hmm, like, yo, that's a very good point. You know what, I'm going to strongly consider it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely consider implementing that. That's, that's, that's good stuff. Now, when you walk away, you might not even implement it. But there's an understanding now that 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 the um that the parent has or the um the the, the in law has that you at least acknowledge their advice that you acknowledge the value of what they're saying. So now and, and you know and on a certain level it kind of plays to their ego a little bit. You know it, it it's kind of a you know a reverse ego trip. You know where you're like you know you're kind of just stroking the ego like hey you know that you have excellent advice. I'm definitely going to take that into consider. But it, but but you know but in all seriousness because again everybody likes to feel valued. Everybody likes to be you know or likes to feel validated in what they have to offer. So a lot of times just because you don't um that you you may not uh, think that what they're saying can be or should be implemented in your particular life in that scenario, it can still be a value. Um, I get information, you know, I, I read stuff that's not to knock, you know, that's not in the scriptures or whatever like that, that's still, I'm like, hmm, that's actually, that's, that, that's sound or whatever like that. I don't know if I'll implement it, you know, whatever like that, you know, because I don't believe in, you know, planting, you know, I don't believe in planting my, uh, my ground with diverse seeds, but I can say, hey, you know, but that's good. And I value the fact that they felt that they can come and try to share what they have with me. So I think it's all a matter of like, going, again, going back to what Shema said, and even Sharika kind of touched on it a little earlier, and that is how it's presented. You know, if you present, if they're giving you the information and you just give them that understanding that, hey, listen, I appreciate what you're offering me. You know, I'm definitely going to take that into consideration. I'm definitely going to let that swirl around in my head they walk away feeling like, okay, cool. He didn't just spit, you know, he didn't just spit at me and say, you know, get out of here, old man, or get out of here, old washed up woman or whatever like that. No, they look at you and they say, like, wow, okay, I'm a valued member of this family. So now going forward, they don't have, they're not coming at you hardcore. Now it's more like, hey, listen, hey, hey, son, I was just thinking, you know, and they give it to him be like, hmm, that's a good point. I'm gonna have to weigh that out. I'm gonna have to kind of, Put that on the scale with what I already have. That's 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 good, and let and let it be, implemented or not implemented, they walk away knowing that they've been valued, and I think that helps create, you know, what I'm saying a more of a sane and unified um, energy in the family. So with that, I yield. So hoodie or uh, Kaim or oh, John, if you want to say something, you can. No, no, I'm all good. I'm just tuning in. Uh, okay, y'all trying to make sure we was cordial because you're a guest over here. Okay. 
Okay. Um, man, y'all really brought out the essence of of this whole this question in particular, the uh, making the uh, the in laws feel value is is really great. And then what Sister Shamika said about you don't want to go to them with everything and, and making them feel like everything's a problem in the house. And then uh, what what uh, uh, Shama said about the communication, like that's that's it in a nutshell. There's really nothing else. If you're speaking clearly and making sure you understood with with your wife and also uh in-laws other parties that are involved um i don't think there should be too many problems you know problems come but there shouldn't really be too many problems if you're speaking and and uh i think what i did want to mention is uh when there is an issue and in-laws have to uh get involved i think it would be best if whosoever direct parent it is doesn't go to them first. I think, uh, and that just popped in my head to say, but I think that when an issue is involved and an in-law gets involved, both uh, husband and wife need to go to them together so that the the person who's ever parent it is can't go and give them an earful first and try to persuade them initially. And then, you know, y'all try to talk and they've already kind of come to a conclusion. So that, I think that's the only two cents that I do have in that but other than that it, it is definitely about communication and not wanting uh, anybody to feel like dang that's all they do over there is fight we always got to help them and then uh you know i it just just I man y'all really touched on it and that's i don't really have too much else to say those are all great points so i yield and that's and that's right on the uh i was gonna say that was heavy in itself you know that's yeah wow. And I was just gonna read what um what Noya said was just along the same lines. Uh well not 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 along the same lines, but she was she said uh yeah, it kind of she said you can be eventing about your spouse and afterwards you're in a better place, but the in-laws are still mad. Then they get mad because you're not mad anymore. So that's that's an excellent point. And I like uh what you said, Kanye, what you said is actually is book anyway. Uh we wouldn't be we shouldn't be play uh, we shouldn't be coming to a judgment without hearing all the different sides anyway. So that's an excellent reminder for us. Um, Cause we might not even, and, and, and of course everybody's experience in an argument is, or disagreement is always one sided. It's always, I was right. You know, I, was, I did it cause you did it first. You know what I'm saying? Just dumb stuff. So, and that's where an older person would be able to see things differently um, and offer an, an objective, uh, uh, solution so i want to give a really quick story um because again the question is what strategies are helpful in preserving the sanity of the entire family so i give my example my mother-in-law again you know uh, like i said we never we was never arguing like when i first met her it wasn't no nothing you know i always thought she was nice she actually is um her family my husband's side of the family was very like touchy-feely and it's a, it's a whole bunch of them. And my side of the family is kind of quiet and like laid back. So it was already um, some 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 molding I had that had to be done on me to even to be useless to have she dealt with people. You know what I'm saying? Like if something happened in their family, you know, by the end of the day, everybody know what happened. So that's kind of how they roll. You know what I'm saying? So she was used to that. And um, over the years, I had to learn that when she was telling me stuff or saying stuff to me or or being a certain way, she wasn't trying to be in my business or nothing. She was just trying to show me that she loved me. So I would say to that, again, being mindful of, being mindful of uh, where the, the in-law is coming from. And also, if stuff happens, because we did get into an argument once about the law, and um, and she had a whole attitude towards me and would not even speak to me. And it was I was so shocked. I was like, now this is after we know we didn't have kids, and I, I think this is probably the after the second kid, so she already knew we was trying to keep the laws. So but she got so offended um, and wouldn't talk to me, which she had never done. So I think my husband at the time, he said, uh, I think he reached out to her and was like, y'all need to work it out. So she invited me to lunch. And uh, that's, 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 that's where I get the idea of a lunch from. She invited me to lunch. And uh, we sat and we talked, you know what I'm saying? And that that made the, the, 
the car start rolling again. You know what I'm saying? Now it was cool again. So I think being, being uh, to the question, being open to being reproved and allowing people to fall and get back up and do things and be offensive. Because we're talking about the unit of a family. The same way I often say with kids, like my kids do stuff all the time, not all the time, but they have done stuff, especially my oldest, he has done stuff that like shocked the mess out of me and, and hurt me. But I love him because he turned back around and now we cool again. So just offering that hand of um the right hand of fellowship, I think it's said in Galatians. <laughs> oh, but but, <laughs> but offering offering that um it's just good practice anyway. Whether or not they receive it, I mean they, you might do it and they might still be like, you know, your wife is your wife is irritating, your husband is irritating, but at least to, to because we say we in the word and we say that we are our house is guarded by the Torah, we but so they might be surprised at how welcoming you are once some drama has happened. So that, and that, that'd be even more encouraging them to maybe consider your lifestyle and how you live it. So um, that's all I had to say about that. Um, and did anyone want to say anything else before we get ready to close out? Shemaya? I do. I do. Um, I don't know. I want, I want some that's listening and hopefully, you know, people on YouTube when this is posted and they check it out that might not be a part of the community we are a part of or might be uh, just, you know, Christian or just so-called black, not even in um, the community. Let's consider this, man. Consider this because this has ruined a lot of uh, relationships. Um, whether it's the in-laws, because that's what the topic is about, or even friends. Consider who you bring whatever situation to. You got to know who they are. That's one. The second part to that is consider how you are. Are you someone that just wants somebody to agree with you? Because a lot of times the people that you bring the information to really don't like somebody said on here know the other person so all they got to bank off of or to give you t any type of advice off of is what you're saying and unfortunately a lot of people even in, within our community people in general i've seen uh, a lot of them can't discern that okay he or she is just hurt right now they're saying a lot of stuff it's a chance it could be true, and it's a chance it's a chance that it's not true. I need to really judge the matter properly, righteously. That's what judging righteously is. We can't just bank off of what somebody says, value what they're saying, be there for them. But if they're asking for your help, get more into the situation respectfully and in order too. Because if they're married, then you have to bring suggestions like one of you just brought out, I forgot which one. I think it was uh, uh, Chaim or Tamar, one of the two. Have them sit down with you. That's what I've done. I've had people that I counsel actually sit down with me. And when they sat down with me, it was, it was different, it was better. Now I could see both vantage points or point of views, and then I could present something objectively that they're not seeing. You know what I'm saying? So that's the best way. We got to see who we, uh, if our in-laws are, you know, we've all been saying this through the whole show, you know, have this wisdom on this particular subject. And then we got to look at ourselves and see if we just want to tell them something to be heard and really not trying to help the matter. We're just trying to be heard and because we're hurting. So, um, that's all I wanted to say, man, because that, that actually happened to me before. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm not, you know, if you're not, it's no way that a person could give you sound advice if they don't know the full story. It is impossible because nine times out of 10, they are going to go off of what they encountered or seen or dealt with. And this individual, I don't care what nobody says, everybody say, you know, all men are the same, all women are the same, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you don't know how this man or woman is that this 
wife or husband is bringing to you about. You don't know how to, so you gotta, you know, you gotta get all the information, communicate properly. And with that, I yield. Indeed, that was excellent, excellent, excellent way to wrap up the show. Um, thanks to everybody that tuned in, everybody that jumped on. Uh, next, should I start seeing next week's topic? I feel like I should. Or oh, no, does it matter? Does anybody care? Yes, you should, or at least text me. Okay, girl. <laughs> okay, so next week's topic is uh, uh, wait a minute. That's my that's my my grocery list. Hold on. Uh, oh. Infidelity in marriage. Infidelity in marriage. That was next week we were talking about that. So, oh, uh, my God. <laughs> Look, I was about to say, dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, great peace to everybody that tuned in. We love you. Uh, share the video if you're on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, share the video later on. Um, and um, uh, most high willing, we'll be back next week. Until then, shalom, shalom. Shalom, all. Uh, shalom, shalom, y'all. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, God.